Melissa and I met um, through mutual friend. Through say. mutual friend, yeah. Um, I was working back home on Nantucket in Massachusetts, uh, and through a mutual friend, Melissa happened to be on Nantucket for the day, um, and I ended up meeting up with her. Almost, baby. For the day. Couple minutes, I'll be right there. That's our daughter, excuse us. Um, we ended up meeting briefly at a brewery mm -hmm. um, for a few hours, one afternoon. Um, and yeah, it was just kind of an instantaneous sort of connection, at least for me. Like, it was as instant for me, I would say, only because I was seeing someone else at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't just like, it wasn't like on my radar. But then like, as soon as you started texting me, I felt like there was a connection. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was, I was definitely instantly attracted and I, <laughs> I, I made it known and I was not shy about making it like obvious in terms of like going after I got your number quick. Sure, yeah. I would say I, that was probably earlier for me. Yeah. I, <laughs> A couple more minutes, babe. I'll be right there. We're just doing something real quick. Sorry. Um, I think it, I don't know if there's necessarily one moment in particular mm -hmm. where I knew that I wanted to marry her. I think it was a collection of just kind of things that we, or at least that I kind of picked up on over time after being with her. I think just kind of seeing how she was and understanding more of who she was as a person just kind of reaffirmed my, you know, my will and want to be with her. And that kind of turned from being with her short term to being with her yeah. a little bit more long term to seeing myself with her forever and I got yeah. my questions kind of changed from you know do I want to spend the next couple of months with you to I do I want to spend the next you know few years with you I think to, for me it was more like he could put up with my friends and put up with my family and I was like ooh, that's hard to find yeah that's true. um we're both not like completely you know like the most religious people out there yeah um we both have religious backgrounds two more minutes babe um <clears throat> melissa went to saint francis and bishop Vero. um her yeah i would say that we both had a had a relatively religious upbringing but we did not have like our 20s were not very religious. Now, I will say that we, we got married in Atlanta at a church in Atlanta. And in order for us to get married at this church in Atlanta, they have you go through this yeah. um, pre-marital class through the church. And that class was actually... A, 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 for most couples, it would be really good because there are a lot of questions and scenarios yeah. and, and situations that they ask you about how you discuss finances, how you handle certain situations with potential kids and things like that. Yeah. Um, that you might not necessarily ask each <coughs> other, you know, in the normal course of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we had already had those conversations together yeah. already. And we had <coughs> known those answers before yeah. we had gone in there. So, you Well, because I think something that we did differently that a lot of people don't do is that we actually did couples therapy before we were thinking about getting engaged. Not because there was a problem. We just wanted to like, we, we, we were thinking to ourselves, like if we're going to make this commitment, like we want to make sure that we've got everything like aired out, like on the table. Um, so that was really important to us to make sure that we were on the same page yep. before we even got engaged. Um, so yeah, the, the whole, the whole marriage counseling with, with through the church before we got married there was kind of like redundant for us because we had, we pretty much already done it. Yep. Um, I will say, I think it was important for both of us to be married in a church. I think that our religious upbringing played mm -hmm. a big part in that. Um, and for our families too. Yeah. For sure. I, I think that my personal relationship with my faith and with God has changed significantly in the last five years. 
I don't know that I would put as much of a, um, an emphasis on needing to get married in a church now as I did, you know, seven years ago or seven years, almost seven years ago. Um, but I, it was important for us at the time. Um, and it's, it's not that it's not important now. I just think that, that there's more to be said about marriage and the union of marriage than where you get married. It's more important to me to to have the foundation for what a marriage signifies versus what the building we're getting married in signifies, if that makes sense. So I think you can still have the religion aspect um, of of marriage and of not the union of marriage and not being a church. I yep. think I I just don't think that I really understood the ability to do that outside of a church when we were getting married. But I, I do now yeah. having someone to take out the trash. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, rewarding part about being married. Uh, honestly, somebody to share yeah. everything with. That's like good. legit, just to share stuff with. I mean, you don't realize like how hard it is to maintain relationships when you graduate from college. Yeah. Like friendships are extremely hard to maintain. You start working you get a busy life, like You'd the move people different places. you get to different. I mean, there, there were people, there were, you know, when we were getting married, we were the first ones of our friends. People then got married after, like we were in different stages of our lives. So it was hard for us to maintain friendships with people and having someone that's constantly there with you in the same moment of life that you're in is huge. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really just about the the commitment to it because you're not just making a commitment to yourself. You're making a, a commitment and you're not just making a commitment to your partner. You're making a commitment to you two as a team. And it's really hard. You have to learn to sacrifice things. You have to learn to compromise and give up on, you know, certain things that you might not have given up on. And, and I don't want to say give up on, but... You definitely have to learn to compromise and to <laughs> re see, honey. I'm gonna be there in. Yeah. I'm in okay. I'm gonna be there in one minute. Okay. You wanna finish this with us? You have to learn to sacrifice certain aspects of your life to make your union better. It just is what it is. There's, yeah. there's no way around it. Yep. Each person has to do it. Sometimes one person has to do it more than the other. Um, and sometimes there are different seasons of life where one person gives up more and then a next season of life where another person gives up more. Yep. Um, and so it's just kind of about understanding that there's a give and take to it. Yeah. And not being too hard on yourself. I not being too perfect. critical. I think it's perfect. What do you think, Reese? That's it. You say bye. Bye bye. Say bye. Yeah.